which is, is that the Invisible Man? Yes. <laughs> Hey everybody. Hello. We just got out of The Invisible Man, which is the latest installment, or I guess now it's the first one in the new Universal Monsters Dark, uh, universe. dark universe. Fuck Saga. you, Tom Cruise. <laughs> Shit. We just got out of The Invisible Man. The feedback on this movie, it's been out for about a week and a half. Feedback has been mostly positive. A lot of people I know are saying that they really, really dug this movie. And then some people are saying that they hated it, but I haven't heard anybody in between. It's also worth noting that this is Lee Winnell, and Lee Winnell's last movie was Upgrade, which is another movie that everybody told me I was going to love. And then I watched it, and I feel like I'm the only person out there that does not like the movie. So I, I had mixed expectations for this. I thought that the trailer looked really cool, really spooky. Coming out, I feel very middle of the road. I think parts of this movie are really, really fun. I think that it does a really good job with atmosphere and making things feel very creepy. But a lot of that is due to the subject matter and not the movie. The performances are also very good, and I think the directing is even quite good. But something about it doesn't hang together, and there are a lot of logical gaps in the movie that just bother me. And therefore, it is, it is middle of the road. It was worth my time but it could have been much better, in my opinion. Like many other people my age, um, I grew up in a time where Kevin Bacon was in every movie. A lot of people might recall that Kevin Bacon was in a movie about the Invisible Man called Hollow Man, and what a fucked up movie that was. Yeah. When I think of, like, Invisible Man, mm -hmm. that's where I am at. I loved Hollow Man. I thought Hollow it was a, a great movie. really good movie and really just like a like a fucked up creepy way. You knew who Kevin Bacon was in the movie before getting into him becoming Hollow Man. This movie, I think what I had the biggest issue with is we were supposed to like give a shit about these characters to some extent, but there was no backbone. There was no backstory. There was no nothing. I just don't think that the movie executed what it intended to do in a great way. Okay. I just don't think it was amazing. And to me, I am not a jump scare person. I am not a scary yeah. movie person. Uh, the whole first half of this movie was unwatchable to me. I was literally in the theater with my hands, Oliver's hands, my jacket, everything over my face because I just couldn't watch it. When you're relying that heavily on jump scares, to me it just seems like your substance is probably lacking a little. I think Lee Winnell is a an effective director, um, mm -hmm. but he's yet to make a movie that I really love. And what he knows how to do is atmosphere. That's mm -hmm. his, his forte. For Where me. he's tripping up in this one, I think, is that he can't commit to his talents. Mm -hmm. That spooky atmosphere sh and like the, the creepiness of this guy could be anywhere should have been enough. We didn't need to do these major jump scares. And the problem is that a lot of the jump scares rely very heavily on, like I was saying before, certain gaps in logic. There's a scene where the Invisible Man gets paint on him in this movie. Um, and it is done to be a jump scare. Right. Once you put the paint on him, that's something that you have to commit to now. Right. Because paint does not come off as easily as this movie would suggest that it does. And I know that it seems like a small thing, but when you have a small movie, the small things are very important. That first half drags the movie down because it simultaneously is full of holes but needs to be taken very seriously. And when you get to the second half of this movie, it's not that at all. It becomes a thriller, which is what it should have been the whole time, and it becomes scary but a little silly, which makes for something that's really imbalanced. The second half is so much more fun. You know, in like a, in a fucked up way, but it is more fun and it doesn't match with everything that was happening at the beginning of the movie. I definitely enjoyed the second half of the movie more than the first half of the movie just because I felt like it was more watchable to me. It was less tense in the way that the first half of the movie was trying to make you feel. So I appreciated those, that second half of the movie much more than the first. I felt very bad for her the yes. whole time. 
And that was good. That was very effective. The problem is that the Invisible Man is a cartoon villain. He's like cartoon evil. Certain other characters in the movie are also cartoon evil so that you never trust them either when it may have been beneficial that you would. You're not given enough about the characters mm -hmm. to kind of know how you're supposed to feel and a lot more of it would have been effective or more effective if you were given a little more or like they could pick a lane of what they wanted each person to be. For a movie like this there's no problem with Invisible Man being right. evil. Flat out evil, no question about it. Right. There's no problem. But that would have been more fun. The first scene of the movie shows that they have a violent relationship. The and not only that, but it also shows the invisible machine. Right. If those two parts were left out, they don't show the invisible suit, I feel like you would have had much more thought provoking feelings about you have a the more movie entertaining going forward. Yes. For sure. It's more entertaining. It's more like edge of your seat, like you don't know what's gonna happen. But because they already showed you these things in the beginning, it kind of takes away the mystery a little bit for us as the viewers. And there are clear plot holes that we're missing that she could just say or do that would prove that he's invisible. Whereas well, if these things were left out, then we would at least be kind of like where everybody else in the movie is supposed to be where they're unsure of whether or not she's telling the truth. I think the first half of the movie is really trying to tell you it's black and white. And there's nothing wrong with that. You could have had the most straightforward movie and it would have been solid.